Police releasing an update report nearly a month after the mass shooting on campus. And there are several key moments as we learn the exact timeline of Anthony McRae's shooting spree. At 8.18 p.m., a call reporting the first shots fired at Berkey Hall was received by Ingham County 911. Just two minutes later, officers entered that building. Then at 8.24, McRae entered the Union. The first report about the shooting there came in two minutes later. And then at 8.27, the first officers arrived at the Union, again showing how quickly officers responded. At 11.18, a photo of the suspect was shared on Michigan State Police social media. By 11.35, 911 received a call about a person matching that description. And at 11.49, officers approached McRae and he took his own life. Well, Taryn, it was in that same report we also learned what was in the letter found on the body of the killer. Fox 2's Amy Lang shares those disturbing details. Possibly a motive for that was he just felt slighted, and that's kind of what the note indicated. That's how investigators described the note found in the pocket of the MSU gunman back in February. Now they're releasing photos of the letter written by Anthony McRae, torn from a spiral notebook dated February 12th, the day before his shooting rampage. It says, sorry for my handwriting. Why, why, why? I've been hurt with a drawing of a crying face. Hi, my name is Anthony McRae. There's a group of us, 20 of us, and I'm the leader. I will be shooting up MSU and some of the other groups Groups will be going to Colorado Springs, New Jersey. Another team will finish off the city of Lansing. Throughout the redacted letter, he writes, they herded me. His targets include a high school, middle school, and church. At the bottom, he writes, lovely, F all you racist mother effers. It's always shocking to hear someone express those kind of feelings of anger, hate, and revenge. Psychiatrist Dr. Gerald Shiner says the second page is even more revealing. They herded me. They hate me. My father has nothing to do with this. He goes on to say, I'm tired of being rejected, outcast, loner. People hate me. They made me who I am today, a killer. No one noticed me. Everywhere I go, people treat me different. I don't want to be American, African. I am a person. Why do people hate me? They never accepted me 10 years since I had sex. They hate me. Why? 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 The only one who's doing the hating is him, but it's why do they hate me? They hurt me. Um, they ignored me. I'm not a, I am a person. I wasn't treated like a person. And the, their social isolation, their self-absorption makes this all magnified. Investigators previously said McRae's father said he rarely left his room and was indeed isolated. These People who go on to be shooters tend to dwell on the hurt, they get angrier, they start plotting revenge, they must get some gratification from the revenge fantasies of getting even, and it's a vicious cycle of resentment, revenge fantasies, more resentment, uh, and it's coupled with the social isolation. While some students and lawmakers now fight for stricter gun laws, this note provides a glimpse into mental health issues often seen in mass shooters. Shiner urges people to reach out and offer help if they know someone who appears isolated. If we see someone who's alone who's lonely, who's isolated, who refuses all social contact, we can ask a question like, what, what's this about? What are you going through? Why are you being this way? And it's not the end of the world. There's help if you can, if, if you can take advantage of it, and it's there for you. That may be enough to make the difference. Not in everyone, not in every case, but if it prevents one or two of these tragedies, it's worth doing. In Birmingham, Amy Lang, Fox 2 News.